Can you get all the nutrition you need from today's food, or do you need to be taking supplements? Well, some people swear by multivitamins. Others say they either aren't effective or actually can cause some harm. Makers of a vitamin pack called 90 for Life say their product provides 90 essential nutrients for life. Dr. Joel Wallach has a Bachelor of Science in Agriculture and a Doctorate in Veterinary Medicine from the University of Missouri, Columbia, and a Doctorate of Naturopathic Medicine from the National College of Naturopathic Medicine in Portland, Oregon. He was also a nominee for the Nobel Prize in Medicine for his stunning discoveries in the use of trace minerals to prevent catastrophic diseases in newborns. He's also referred to as Doc Wallach. He realized that traditional medicine was very flawed in its focus on treatment rather than focusing on preventing disease through proper nutrition. This was something he learned and was essential in veterinary medicine because there is no health insurance for animals. Striving to provide Americans with a new view of health and healing, Doc authored Dead Doctors Don't Lie. And the book tells the story of Doc Wallach's journey to discovering the importance of proper nutrition. It goes into how degenerative diseases are linked to specific mineral and vitamin deficiencies. He's also started a company called Longevity that provides high-quality nutritional supplements to enrich your quality of life at healthwaynews.com. He's our guest on the show today. He's here to talk to us about health, the importance of proper nutrition, and what people can do to stay healthy. We'll also talk about the 90 for Life product produced by Longevity and the value of supplements. Welcome to the program, Doc. Well, thank you, Gary. Appreciate your hospitality. I'm happy to be here. Yeah, great to have you on the program. Um, let's talk about the book, Dead Doctors Don't Lie. It's a pretty provocative title. Um, tell us about it. Well, basically, um, the average lifespan of medical doctors, according to their own survey, which came out in 1999, is 56. And so why would anybody want to listen to a group of people whose average lifespan is 56 to live to be 100? Also, uh, this uh, story came out in um, February 5th, 2007, and it was a big story. It was from the Institute of Medicine, the Journal of the American Medical Association, the Centers for Disease Control, and they said that... Um, Medical doctors each year, there's a yearly figure, kill, injure, and infect 15 million patients in hospitals and clinics across America alone. Can you repeat that statistic one more time, please? They kill, injure, and infect 15 million patients in hospitals and clinics each year in America alone. Medical doctors. Medical doctors do, yes. And so um, how many people would fly commercial airlines if they knew they killed, injured, and infected 15 million people? How many people would go to a fast food restaurant if they knew they killed, injured, and infected 15 million customers? And so I thought it was um, uh, quite interesting since the medical system has uh, been able to wiggle themselves into a protective monopoly that is self-policing since 1914 following a report called the Flexner Report. And um, they're totally unimpeachable. They can uh, kill with impunity, it seems, and uh, uh, they get a walk. Nobody even gets a parking ticket. So, so – Dead doctors don't lie. What, what's really the, the basis for the book? So you reveal those those truths yes, sir. in your book, um, and then you go into some other topics. Well, sure. Well, basically, as you pointed out very very well, uh, in veterinary medicine, we don't health, have health insurance for animals. And a farmer is not going to pay $78,000 uh, for a hip replacement for a $10,000 bull. Okay, and so we had to learn how to regrow cartilage. We had to learn how to uh, regrow a heart. When, when a bull has congestive heart failure, we can deal with that in five days. It's a deficiency of a single vitamin. Doctors like heart transplants to make a quarter of a million dollars when it should cost a couple of bucks uh, to deal with congestive heart failure. Um, things like um, Alzheimer's disease. Uh, I said in 1993 when the original Dead Doctors Don't Lie audio cassette tape came out in 1993, that Alzheimer's disease was a physician-caused disease that actually caused um, by deficiencies of nutrients rather than a genetically transmitted disease, as doctors said. And, of course, that set off a firestorm and um, uh, really uh, brought us to the level where it was nationally looked at. So, in your view, you see that most diseases are essentially the result of a deficiency of a mineral or a vitamin. It that's, can be treated by simply taking a supplement that's in, in most cases. In most cases, it can uh, be prevented or reversed with uh, nutritional supplements. That includes omega-3s, amino acids, vitamins, minerals. Uh, for instance, there's not a single birth defect that's caused by genetic uh, problems. 
uh, although doctors say all, gen- all birth defects are caused by genetic problems, and there's not a single one. Um, you have to appreciate, Gary, that over the thousands of years that there's been philosophers and physicians and medical doctors, um, <clears throat> there's thousands of failed medical theories. And the most recent one we're living through right now is a failed medical theory that all diseases are caused by bad genes. And if they could just build a good gene, genetically engineer one, replace the bad gene with a good one, everything would be fine. There's not a single disease that's genetically transmitted. And so we're living through kind of the end uh, of this uh, time where everybody thought that every disease was caused by bad genes. It's called epigenetics. Uh, Epigenetics is a term given to the process by which your DNA and your genes require certain nutrients to maximize their genetic potential. In other words, let's say we have the potential to live 200 years but you only live to be 45 years because you don't give your genes the raw materials they need to get you to the 200-year mark. And so that's where we're at. Uh, there's not a skull disease that's caused by genes. It's, it's actually all nutritional deficiencies. Now, Doc, if somebody is, says, well, I, I eat a healthy diet, uh, is it necessary for them to take supplements? Absolutely impossible to have an adequate diet eating healthy. And there's two reasons for that, Gary. Number one, at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, Monday, September 4th, 1882, on Pearl Street, New York City, on the bluff overlooking the construction of the Brooklyn Bridge, Thomas Edison pulled the switch on the first commercial electric generating plant. Within 10 years, every town, every municipality, and every city in the industrialized world converted from wood as a universal fuel into electricity. Well, wood was our source of nutritional minerals for thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of years because the ashes aren't really ashes. Their minerals are left when you burn the wood for fuel. You would throw these minerals, a.k.a. wood ashes, into the garden. The corn and the beans and tomatoes and sweet potatoes and onions would soak up those minerals. You'd eat them and you'd get your minerals in that fashion. Once we went to electricity, nobody replaced that traditional source of mineral nutrients. Secondly, we began to dam up the big rivers for two reasons. Number one, people complained about flooding in the cities. And then secondly, um, they needed more electricity because of the demand for electricity grew. Well, um, when it would flood every year, the flood would leave silt and mud in the fields, which are a source of minerals from mountains hundreds of miles away. And the farmers would plow that back in. So the mineral source is renewed into the fields every year by flooding. And every day, at least in the rows near the farmer's house, by throwing the wood ashes out into the garden. Both those sources, the traditional sources of nutritional minerals went away. And here come the medical doctors. Don't you dare take vitamins and minerals. You can overdose, you know. And so that between the respected person telling people not to take supplements, our source of nutritional minerals going away because the wood ashes went away because of electricity use and uh, damming up the rivers so we no longer got flooding, we're in big trouble. So some people would would argue, you know, I... Supplements are too expensive. I already eat healthy. What, what do you say to people who feel that supplements are just too expensive to purchase? Well, death is very expensive, Gary. Disease is very expensive. I'll give you a, a couple of examples. Um, <clears throat> you look at a preemie. For the three months you're in the hospital, it costs, on the average, this was just a cover story in Time magazine, um, it costs $280,000 for a preemie for three months on the average. Some of them cost $500,000, but on the average it's 280000 some of them cost 150000 but on the average, 280000 For $1,200 worth of supplements for the nine months of pregnancy, there'll never be another preemie. It's just that simple. We've done that in the animal industry. Because you can imagine a farmer having to put preemie calves in an incubator for three months. Your hamburger would cost you $500 a pound just to pay for the preemie care for calves. And um, secondly, let's look at things like um, very simple stuff like joint replacements. A hip replacement in America costs $78,000. Deals with one joint. Doesn't deal with the other 71 joints in the body. Uh, Our program for supporting and promoting maintenance repair of cartilage, ligaments, tendons, joints, if you will, backs, it would cost for a 200-pound man, big fellow like yourself, it would cost, um, uh, say, $1,500 for three months, $1,500, and after that, $250 a month for maintenance, as opposed to $78,000. Um, The thing that's broken America financially is the high cost of ineffective, dangerous medical treatments. Okay, And so it's much better to use supplements than it is to do surgery. 
And of course, it's medical doctors who say that supplements are dangerous. Well, in 2007, Gary, the FDA finally submitted to the pressure of the pharmaceutical industry and doctors and reported the first time, for the first time ever, the, um, the reports that would be coming in uh, for um, people saying, <clears throat> I got diarrhea by taking too much vitamin C. I, I got itchy skin from taking too much niacin. And I got headaches from taking some of those herbs that are in energy drinks. My heart really went fast. I went to the emergency room. 600 reports, uh, adverse events reports, they call them, um, in 2007, reported in, in 2008 for herbs, vitamins, and minerals. 600 adverse events reports, 400 were in um, herbs, and 200 in vitamins, and minerals. The same year, 2007, reported in 2008, it was just short of 500,000 adverse event reports for prescribed pharmaceuticals. 500,000 versus 600. And of course, most of the 500,000 were deaths. None of the nutritional or herbal adverse events reports were deaths. Now, those are pretty shocking figures when you, when you look at the, the natural supplement versus the, the big pharma uh, medications, over-the-counter drugs. Um, so when somebody's going into the store, and they they see the the lines of vitamins. Um, how, how how do they make an informed choice? Is there's so many companies, there's so many uh, so many uh, choices out there. Um, first of all, what are before we get into that specifically? What are some of the the key? You have ninety for life is your program, uh, but what are some of the would you say top ten vitamins that are that that people really need to focus on? Well, first of all, <clears throat> have you ever heard of a cake recipe, Gary? No, I have not. You have never heard of a cake recipe? Oh, a cake recipe. I'm <laughs> sorry. I thought you mentioned a name. I thought you mentioned Kate Ressi. Yes, I'm sorry. I don't know who that is. <laughs> okay, well, a cake recipe, of course, let's say it has 25 ingredients. What if you just take the, first, the 10 you like and leave out the other 15? You're not going to have a very good cake, right? It's going to be a pancake. It's going to taste awful or it's going to be gritty. or It's not going to be right. And so we like to talk about all the known essential nutrients. Okay, we're going to assume you're going to get a smattering of this and that, and, but it's not going to be, you can eat a tomato from the same garden every day, but one tomato might have 10 of the nutrient and the next tomato has three and so on. And uh, it's not very predictable. We're supposed to be at the high end of the intelligence chain. So let's take all 90 essential nutrients, 60 minerals, 16 vitamins, 12 essential amino acids, 3 essential fatty acids. So to get the complete cake recipe, you need all 90. And so I, I'm always reluctant to pick out the top 10 of any one thing. And um, when you look at the top multiples on the market, regardless of brand, you're looking at 28 to 30 nutrients in there, maybe 13 minerals. Well, what about the other 47? On the average, each mineral gives you, and deficiency will give you anywhere from 10 to 25 diseases. Calcium deficiency alone gives you 147 different diseases. Then... Um, when you look at, uh, you go to a health store, health food store, uh, or you go to a grocery or a pharmacy, they'll have vitamin A, vitamin C, calcium, magnesium, zinc. And if you, if you buy a $10 bottle of these nutrients and you have to get uh, 72 bottles to get each of your nutrients, you're looking at $720 for a month. Okay, so we've gotten it down to using natural products and we test everything to make sure each batch has all 90 essential nutrients and optimal amounts. Uh, for, for a 120 pound person, it's gonna cost them um, uh, something like two bucks a day. Um, for a 200 pound person, it's gonna cost you maybe $5 a day. And that's going to support and promote maintenance repair of cartilage, ligaments, tendons, connective tissues, muscles, heart, lungs, liver, kidneys, brain, eyes. And um, myself, uh, this month, using the Chinese numbers, I've turned 75, and um, I haven't been to a doctor with me being the patient for 68 years, been taking the 90 essential nutrients twice a day uh, for 68 years, never been on prescription medication. My, high, my, my blood pressure is um, 90 over 60. My pulse is 43, which is a little high for me. It's normally 38 is my pulse. And I can go to a pharmacy without a prescription, buy all the test strips that a doctor will use in a physical in his office for a buck fifty a test strip. 
and all my numbers are right dead center of normal. I've been doing this for 68 years. And if everybody does this, the medical system would be real humble. And so that's my job is to teach people to use all 90 essential nutrients. It's very economical, $150 a month instead of $750. You can't buy individual nutrients and put them together. It's too expensive. And the average person will say, well, I'll leave this one. I'll just take the top 10, and I hope I'll get the others out of my food. It's, it's actually insane to do that when a dog food has everything in it. Uh, our babies' formulas, for instance, Gary, have um, uh, something like uh, 13 minerals. Where's the other 47? Or, and the Food Chemistry Journal came out in April of uh, 2012 and said baby formulas we're very familiar with. I mean, very well-respected baby formulas have less than 20% of the minerals and less than 20% of the vitamins our babies need. Dog food has 100%, laboratory rat food has 100%, chicken food has 100%, and our kids have less than 20%. During the break, we were, we were talking briefly uh, about scurvy. And uh, tell us about the history of that and how that was, uh, was essentially cured. Okay, well, scurvy, of course, is a very famous, very important historical disease. More than 2 million British and Japanese soldiers died uh, over a 100-year period from scurvy. Uh, because as they would go on these long sea voyages, they didn't have anything fresh to eat. Uh, they would eat uh, salted pork and uh, that sort of thing, but they didn't have cabbage, they didn't have fresh fruit or uh, green things to eat. And so uh, vitamin C, which when you're deficient in vitamin C, you get scurvy. And so they didn't have an adequate source of vitamin C. And after 90 days at sea, they're all coming down, their teeth are falling out, their bones are falling apart, connective tissue is falling apart, they hemorrhage to death. And it cost the British Navy and the Japanese Navy enormous sums of money, plus uh, the lives of the sailors. And, of course, uh, a lot of the, the... How long did it plague? How long did it plague the, these navies? Oh, several hundred years. Okay. And, of course, the medical doctors at that time were looking for the germ. Mm. You get some grandmother say, well, just let each sailor take a head of cabbage with them or a basket of fruit, and it won't happen. Well, where's the germ, lady? There's got to be a germ because this is one of those failed medical theories where they thought that they fought uh, Louis Pasteur for 100 years, right? His theory of the germ theory, um, because he's the one that came up with the germ theory is Louis Pasteur. He was a wine chemist and he was only a wine chemist. And we doctors know that all diseases are caused by things like um, or four humors are out of balance or spontaneous generation. There's no such things as germs. Well, von Leeuwenhoek, the guy that came up with a microscope and Pasteur could see these germs and he could take pus from somebody or sputum from somebody who had pneumonia or dying and inject it into an animal and cause the same disease. And so he knew these little bugs called germs you can see under the microscope cause disease. And he came up with a germ theory and medical doctors fought him even long after he died. Once they believed in germs... And everything, including every nutritional disease you can think of, including scurvy and beriberi and pellagra and so forth, were all caused by germs. And millions of people died because they kept looking for the germ and disregarded what Grandma said about eating more fresh fruits and vegetables. Now, there's, there's a hot, hot debate about cancer and uh, its causes. In your research uh, over time, have you discovered that cancer is also a, a, the cause of a vitamin deficiency? Well, there's many things we know about cancer. Uh, number one, um, uh, and uh, this is one of my lawsuits against the FDA, and I, I prevailed in federal courts to be able to say that you can um, um, prevent or reduce the risk of many different cancers by supplementing with 200 micrograms a day of the trace mineral selenium. Reduce the risk of certain cancers like breast cancer by 82 percent, prostate cancer by 69 percent, and um, breast cancer by 32 percent just by supplementing with 200 micrograms of selenium. You can also reduce the risk of breast cancer by 462% by just cooking your meat medium rare instead of well done. Um, the cancer bullseye in America is Jackson, Mississippi. Now, when you look at uh, the cancer rate across the United States, the worst place to be in America for cancer is Jackson, Mississippi. There's Why no, is that? Well, um, that's because they fry everything there. There's rumors they even fry water. We know they fry ice cream, but they might even fry water. And um, fried foods cause trans fatty acids, heterocyclic amines, and acrylamides. These are chemicals far more dangerous than anything that Monsanto and Dow Chemical will make. And eating fried foods 
causes cancer. People have to come to grips with this. And, of course, this goes along with a study from the University of South Carolina, which came out in 1998. Which, well, let me just jump in there yeah. real quick. I love fried foods. Is there, do you have a supplement that I can take that I can still eat my fried foods? I wouldn't suggest that, but we do know that antioxidants, mm -hmm. which will reduce the level of free radical damage, uh, you're going to have to eat... 100,000 ORAC points an hour, okay, to, to compensate for eating fried foods. I just wouldn't play with that. It's like playing with a loaded gun, pointing at yourself and pulling the trigger and say, well, there's only one shell in there, bam, you know, you're dead. And the same thing is I wouldn't give anybody permission to take more antioxidants and eat fried foods. I just, I don't do it. Um, you're going to get some protection, but I've known people who have tried it and they didn't do well, and so I wouldn't suggest it. So what makes your product, your vitamin supplements, your 90 for life program, uh, what sets it apart from from the pack? You know, are, are all supplements created equal is the question. Well, the, the question, the answer, of course, is that no, not all supplements are created equal. For instance, um, what makes me different? You said it very well at the beginning. I have a degree in agriculture. I have a degree in veterinary medicine. But you left out the fact that I do have also a postdoc in comparative pathology where I do autopsies in animals and people. Um, and this is before I became a naturopathic physician. And in one study, I did over 20,000 autopsies at the Center for the Biology of Natural Systems at Washington University at the St. Louis Zoo and the Shaw's Botanical Gardens in St. Louis in the 60s and 70s. And the book that came out of that 1,200 pages uh, is in the Smithsonian Institute as a national treasure. And the bottom line of that study was that there's 454 species of zoo animals 3,000 humans, 17,000 some change of over 454 species of animals, 10 million chemistries. It's in a book that thick. And the bottom line of the study, Gary, was that every animal and every human being that dies of what we would call natural causes dies of a nutritional deficiency disease. If you ask a medical doctor to name all the rare earths, which double the lifespans of laboratory animals and double blind randomized studies, they can't name you one. They don't even know what a rare earth is. But these are substances. Well, for, for, yeah, for our, for our audience's yeah. benefit, of, what is a rare earth? Okay, well, a rare earth is a trace, trace, trace mineral. Uh, you need, say, a thousand times less of ytterbium, yttrium, neodymium, prosthodymium than you do selenium or magnesium or chromium or vanadium. And, but they're essential for maximizing your genetic potential for longevity and health. Okay, it will double the lifespan of laboratory animals. And so why not be aware of those and make sure you're taking adequate amounts to make your genes and your DNA happy? Okay, well, if a doctor doesn't even know they exist, because all he knows about is calcium and magnesium and some potassium, and otherwise they're extremely ignorant. And that's why only dead doctors don't lie. So what conditions give bodies the best chance to heal themselves so we don't have to go... Uh, to the to the dead doctor and mm -hmm. get get a, a pharmaceutical mm -hmm. uh, prescription, which is comes along with multiple side effects. Sure. Well, first of all, you have to appreciate Gary. With the exception of antibiotics, which do cure syphilis, antibiotics will cure strep throat, bacterial meningitis, gangrene, these sorts of things. Um, like with the exception of antibiotics, which is about five hundred of them in the physician's desk reference, there's not a single pharmaceutical is prescribed by medical doctors to cure anything. They all relieve symptoms. There's no law requiring a doctor to cure you when there's a cure available. For instance, rheumatoid arthritis is curable in two weeks. But why would a doctor want to make $300 in office calls by curing you of your rheumatoid arthritis in two or three weeks when he can make $750,000 by treating you for 25 years? Insurance pays. Why worry about it? Is there, are there philosophies? So rheumatoid arthritis is, is a major problem in America. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people watching this right now are suffering from yes. it. Um, what mineral supplements would you say that individual could take to alleviate some of that, uh, some of that, that, that problem, that disease? Okay. Well, rheumatoid arthritis, Gary, has, is two parts. Number one, the actual disease is different from bone-to-bone -bone arthritis or osteoarthritis or osteopenia and osteoporosis, which is simply a, a, a nutritional deficiency. Okay, rheumatoid arthritis is a combination of a nutritional deficiency and an infection with a bug called mycoplasma. And there's a, a tetracycline called minocycline. It's a member of the tetracycline family. And I can kill that bug in two weeks with minocycline. I can kill the mycoplasma in two weeks. So it kills the infection, just like I can kill the syphilis bacteria 
with penicillin in two weeks. Just same concept, no big deal. But then you have the damage that that bacteria did to the joints, joint capsule, tendons and ligaments and deficiencies, um, complicated things by causing all kinds of deformities. Well, we have a program we call the Healthy Bone and Joint Pack, which has all 90 essential nutrients, plus what we call the secret sauce for supporting and promoting maintenance repair of cartilage, ligaments, tendons, connective tissue, joint capsules, discs between the vertebrae, all the things that are damaged by this infection. And so uh, all the drugs that are sold on TV or the doctor might prescribe for you for rheumatoid arthritis, gold shots, methotrexate, and, um, and some of the pharmaceuticals, which I'm not going to name, um, only relieve symptoms. None of them kill the bug. None of them, re- none of them rebuild anything. They relieve pain and inflammation. And so over time, the infection and the degenerative disease gets worse and worse and worse. Then you have joint replacements. And this is where the big expense comes in. $780,000 for each hip. That's $160,000 for two hips and the knee replacements and the finger replacements and four joints and, and, the, and the fingers and, and the um, back of the hand, the wrist, the elbow, the shoulders. And so it gets pretty scary. But doctors know that each rheumatoid arthritis patient is money in the bank. They just draw on that deposit anytime they need the money. Kids going into Harvard, hey, come on in, Frank. I I have a brand new hip I'm going to try on you. I'm going to give you a discount on it. Frank comes in, charges the guy his $78,000 insurance company. Sounds like, um, sounds like like a bit of a racket to me. It is a racket. What other industry can kill, injure, and infect 15 million of their customers in their workplace every year and still be in business year after year after year. Let's talk about exercise for a okay. moment. And uh, just how, how important is exercise compared to vitamins for good general health? There is no comparison. If you have a choice of taking all 90 essential nutrients and exercise, take the 90 essential nutrients, skip the exercise. Exercise without supplementation is a fatal, fatal, fatal disease. What you think about it, Gary? You take all the professional sports combined. The average lifespan of professional athletes is 62. Football players is 51. There's never been a professional athlete ever lived to be 100. So what's so good about exercise? In fact, in um, December of 1982, the Journal of the American Medical Association came out with a little study that said, while running, a man's risk of heart attack death increases by 700%. So why would anybody want to run? Okay, if you're going to run, you better be supplementing heavily. And so we came out with a sports drink that has 100 nutrients in it, replacing everything that's in your sweat. Most sports drinks have either two, four, or six nutrients in it. Ours has 100 because sweat is not water. Sweat is a soup of, of everything floating around your blood. So you have a sports drink as well. Yes. And how does that compare to the stuff that we find at the, in the gas station refrigerator? Well... Again, depending on the brand, they might have two nutrients. They might have four nutrients or six nutrients. How do you compare two, four, or six nutrients with a hundred nutrients? And your sweat's going to contain any contain. Your sweat is going to contain anywhere between, um, say, sixty-five and ninety nutrients, depending on if you're supplementing or not. Uh, if you just drink water to rehydrate yourself, you'll rehydrate yourself, but your knees will break down because you're not getting enough nutrients to replace what you're losing through the sweat. Uh, you might get muscle cramps. You're going to get muscle tears. Uh, you're going to get a sudden heart death, like a lot of 10,000 young athletes every year in America die from sudden heart death. This is due to a deficiency of a single mineral, selenium, uh, ruptured aneurysms while running, because of the death of many young athletes. And this is caused by deficiency of another single mineral, copper. Well, there's no, uh, with the exception of our sports drink, there's no other sports drink that has copper and selenium. And they all have just sodium and chloride. Okay. Now, what about children? Um, you know, we've seen the little gummies that, that kids can have mm-hmm. and, uh, and, and those types of things. Just how important uh, is, is supplement for a growing child? Well, a growing child needs more vitamins and minerals per pound of body weight than an adult. Like you and me, we're maintaining ourselves, right? And we just want to maximize our genetic potential for longevity and health. Well, these kids, not only are they looking at that requirement, but also they're looking at growth and puberty and all the other th- special pressures that are put on their systems. And so per pound of body weight, a youngster needs far more nutrients each day than we do for maintenance per pound of body weight. So 
Um, and again, um, in April of 2012, in Food Chemistry Journal, it said that our very well-respected baby foods, baby formulas, uh, contain less than 20% of the minerals and vitamins that our babies need. So we have an insane system. Um, in fact, to cover story, Time magazine in December of 2008 came out and said that our children are not going to live as long as us. Our, uh, our kids are the first generation. They're not going to live as long as the parents. The parent, many parents will be burying their children because they're not getting the nutrition that we got uh, simply because there's no more wood ashes going into the garden. We've dammed up the river. There's no more silt coming in in the floods every year. And then here's the doctor in his white coat saying, now, don't you supplement, Gary. It's bad for you. You can overdose, you know. Well, Doc, we're, we're, we're coming up to the end of the end of the, the clock here. And uh, I want to ask you one last question. Yes, sir. What do you think are the leading causes of the health care crisis uh, in the United States? Well, the main cause is the medical system has been made into a... Um, uh, a, a monopoly. Uh, this monopoly is um, um, self-policing. They have been able to render all their competition as quacks. Insurance only pays them. And any industry that can kill, injure, and infect 15 million of their customers at workplace every year and still be in business next year or next month or next week is an amazing industry when you think about it. Um, they also infect 2 million people each year in hospitals alone of which 90,000 die? What if Iran or North Korea would have sent over a biological weapon, an intercontinental ballistic missile, and killed 90,000 people and infect 2 million in a large population center? We declare war on them. And here's one trade that does it every year in their workplace, and nobody seems to care. That's the biggest problem. They don't have any competition. If you're going to put a roof on your house, Gary, or put a sprinkler system in your yard, you're going to get five bids. You're going to find out from... Um, something like Better Business Bureau or one of these things online, who's the best one? And you're going to uh, find out if there's any complaints about them. People go to the same doctor for 25, 30, 40 years, whatever the doctor says they do without even checking with another doctor. Those, that's the main problem. If there's one thing that you want our audience to take away from today, from this interview, and we've covered so much ground here, and I wish we had more time because uh, we could keep on going. I know we could. Um, but if there's one thing you really want our audience to take away from today, what would that be? That they must supplement with the 90 essential nutrients and do it obsessively. I've done it for twice a day for 68 years, been blessed with perfect health. If everybody were like me health-wise, guess what, Gary? The medical system would be really, really unhappy. And what do you think would happen with Obamacare? Oh, <clears throat> well... Um, Obamacare uh, is problematic uh, simply because um, it, it failed thinking that the reason why America is sick is because they didn't have access to doctors. Obamacare is like putting people in the furnace. So having the supplements would prevent that from happening because you put six quarts of oil in your car, to prevent the engine from burning up. Do you put the six quarts of oil in your car after the engine burns up or before the engine burns up? So you take the 90 essential nutrients before you get sick, you just don't get sick. 